the biggest mistakes tourists make in the USA. I will be visiting America at some point. So really interested to see what we got with this video. Before we do get into this, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's get into this and check out the mistakes tourists are making in America. Here with Walter's World and today we're here at Mount Rushmore and today we're going to talk about are some of the little mistakes that tourists make when they come to the U.S. Okay. And the first mistake is getting upset when the Americans count continents a little bit differently. Here in the U.S. we Which have means? seven continents. North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Antarctica, and Australia. Okay. The thing is, other places around the world, sometimes they combine North America and South America into the right. Americas and they only have six. So don't get upset if we count a little bit differently here in the U.S., all right? Okay, fair now, enough. let's see some more of this beautiful country to talk Wait, about what some does that say? mistakes you might see. What does that say? Right. What does it say? In the U.S., this is once... So we count for... <laughs> Yo, he's pretty much saying, yo, that is one sandwich in, in the UK. That would be two sandwiches, bro. Now, let's see some more of this beautiful country That's to massive. talk about some of the other mistakes you might see. So now we're here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And my next mistake that I see tourists make when they come to the U.S. is thinking that no one will understand them when they talk smack in a foreign language. Look, you right. can talk smack in German, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, whatever, and you may think no one's going to understand you, but you'll be surprised how many people actually will understand you. Okay? Yo, really? I mean, I've been on trips. I remember, I remember we were in New Orleans. My buddy and I were sitting there, and these two guys were talking about these girls. They were speaking German. And they were talking about these two cute girls up there. Okay. And the two girls turn around, and they're like, we had German in college, and they're like, oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So don't think you can go around and talk. Yo, that would be so awkward, bro. Like, talking in a different language, and you think no one can understand, and they, they can't understand, bro. That would be so awkward. Talking smack in Italian or Portuguese or Japanese or whatever, and you won't have a local be like, uh, dude, we understand what you're saying. Uh -oh. now, I'm not saying everybody will understand, but don't think it's going to be a secret language right you know, just in case all right sure. now another mistake i see tourists make when they come is they get really upset when people ask for their id when they buy alcohol or cigarettes look you don't they i know in lots of places around the world you never have to show an id if you look like you're older than older than 15 they're like sure you can buy that right to, yeah to be fair i'm not really i don't really get checked for id no more so I, I kind of do get that, especially if you look older than me as well. But yeah, America's like really strict with checking IDs, aren't they? In the US, that's not the way. The reason why they're so strict with it, if they get caught selling without asking for ID or right. they sell to someone that's underage, they can get a really big fine. Mad. And people don't want to pay that fine. So it's just, hey, look, I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to get a ticket. Can I just see your ID? Yo, it makes sense though. You know what I mean? Like, bro, they're not risking it. You know, hey, listen. Just have your ID on you, you chill. I've always got my ID on me anyway. And the thing is, it's not just the person buying. They could ask the ID for the person with them, okay? Oh. So have your password with you. Have an ID with you that shows your, your age. If you're going to be buying alcohol or cigarettes, even if you look uh -oh. like an old fart like me, sometimes I have to show my ID still, okay? So take it as a positive. You just look really young, okay? <laughs> and when you're talking to those locals, another mistake I see tourists make is... Yo, it's actually crazy because I... He's obviously not under the age of 21, right? I think, hey, he looks good. I don't know what age he is, but listen, he's obviously not under the age 21, right? So that's crazy, like, to us that he would get ID because he wouldn't get ID in the UK. They don't ask the locals for advice. Look, when you're in the U.S., we're very gregarious people. We like to nice talk. People. We like to share. We yeah. like to tell you, oh, this is the greatest place to get this. We have best steaks down the road here. But right. if you're going to get Rocky Mountain Oysters, they've got them right there at the Albany. And so you want to take in the local flavor, right? So you got to ask the locals. And the thing is, a lot of us now, Makes we sense. use the trip advisors, We use the Yelps. And we base True. everything we do on that, which a lot of times is good. But wouldn't you want to know from an actual local versus a lot of tourists just writing reviews? The thing is, most Europeans keep themselves to themselves. They're not like Americans where they'll just go out, you know what I mean? Like, like go and talk to random people and strangers. Like, you Americans, I've, I've heard that you guys are super nice. You guys will go to random people, talk to them, make conversation. And yeah, in Europe, bro, people are keeping themselves to themselves, so... 
So make sure you take the time to talk to the locals. Don't make the mistake right. of ignoring them. Take in their advice and learn because you might find out that, oh yeah, you can actually go to this museum. It's free on Tuesdays and you can go get really good food here. And they've got actually free beer samples over there. I'm like, free beer? Hold on. Because honestly, if you Helpful. go to Ybor City in, in Tampa, you want to make sure that you get the right Cuban sandwich when you go because you got to order it the right way when you're right. down there. And the locals will help you out with that. Now, another mistake I see, and I've talked about this in other videos, but I think it's important to talk about again, is the mistake of not tipping. Look, I would oh. say not tipping and then giving some excuse. In the US, servers, bartenders, waiters, waitresses, they make their living off of tips. Right. You are not 15, going to change 20%. the system by saying, I don't agree with tipping. This is wrong. I will never tip. They should get paid more. This is me saying that they should get paid more. I'm not going to support those. those. Yo, I just want to pause it real quick. Like, what would happen if someone from Europe happens to go to a place and, like, either, like, forgets to tip because it's just not, like, you know, they're not used to it or they don't tip, right? What would actually happen? Would it, would it, would it get in trouble? <laughs> or tip. They should get paid more. This is me saying that they should get paid more. I'm not going to support those those business owners that are doing that. Look, you're, you're not doing that. All you're doing is being cheap. Says like Las Vegas have a lot of people who live off tip, so please do. Yeah, yeah. See, I watch these videos, so I when I go to America, I'm definitely going to be tipping, right? Because I'm somewhat like, I, I, I know what, I know you need to, you know what I'm saying? Whereas, like, let's say I wasn't watching these videos and people just want to go to America because, you know, they want to go to America. But they don't really know when to tip or why to tip or, you know what I'm saying? So why if they didn't tip? Okay, you like the food, how it's cheap in the U.S.? Well, part of that is because they don't have to put on the service they charge. they get They pay the waiters and stuff as much. And so they have lower food prices. So therefore, it's up to you to tip. So 15 to 20% right. when you go to a sit-down restaurant, that's a typical tip in the u.s okay so don't make the mistake of not tipping because i guarantee yo tip is at the end of like the food and stuff like the service so let's say you didn't tip would they like as you're leaving come up to you and just like boom drop kick out the uh, out the building <laughs> hey you didn't tip boy get get out of here man t if you go back to that same restaurant they'll remember you so oh, i'll leave cheyenne they here will? let's go see more beautiful parts of the u.s so continuing on with yo so like if you're around that area for a few weeks because you're on you know holiday vacation right they'll remember you and then they won't give you good service yo some mistakes the tourists make in the u.s we're here in atlanta georgia and my next mistake i have for tourists is they don't buy the insurance package when they buy their plane tickets what's the insurance well, package? your insurance back home may only cover your insurance back home Make sure you right. have insurance for your trip, not just in case the uh, oh, trip hospital. gets canceled, but also for health insurance purposes. Right. Because health insurance and health issues in the U.S. are crazy expensive. You Yo, would travel insurance? Because I, when I go abroad, like in Europe, I, I get travel insurance, and then like if something happens over there, you'll be able to like you know get checked upon, right? So if I, is that just travel insurance for America? I don't know. Does anyone, someone might know in the comments. You need to go to the ER, you can be out a few grand, okay? A lot of times when you buy international tickets, they'll give you the option to get extra insurance when you do that. Make sure you wow. pick it up or talk to your insurance provider back home to see if your insurance will be working there. Because man, I mean, having a few thousand dollar bill on your credit card can be a bit Yo. tough, okay? So, just have a heads up for that. Hey, I'm interested. Yo, this is gonna, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Everybody comment down below right now if you're from America. What, if you don't mind, you don't, obviously you don't have to, but what was your biggest hospital bill and for what? Because I really want to put like a price to the incident, you know, so I kind of know. But yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting. Another mistake I see tourists make is they don't sign up for the loyalty programs. It's the loyalty Look, programs. Here in the U.S., we love our loyalty programs. Yes, I'd love to collect my okay. miles so I can get a free flight. Yes, I would love to collect my hotel stay so I can get a free night in a hotel. Yes, I'd love a free upgrade because I'm a member of this program. Sounds good. Or my personal favorite, hey, if I'm a member of your hotel thing, I get free internet? Yes, yes you do. So make okay. sure if you're going to be coming to the U.S. and you're going to travel around, join clubs. sign up for those loyalty programs. Maybe you're going to be Hilton Honors or Marriott or IHG, whatever. Get that because there are discounts for visiting amusement parks for more than one day.
that you may not want to go more than one day. True. Especially for a Taurus, you're probably not going more than one day. I don't know, maybe. If you're here for two weeks, it adds up very quickly. And so you might get a night or two for free in a hotel or an upgrade to a nicer room That's or free bars or free Wi-Fi. It does make a difference. And the thing is, those loyalty programs, it's not just for Delta Airlines and Marriott hotels. No, they have that for stores and restaurants and things like that. Oh, wow. So okay. make sure you do sign up for those to get the benefits, okay? Yeah, in the UK, we do have some shops with loyalty programs like Tesco. They have the club card and you, you will get prices, uh, you'll get discounts on things and then you'll get points where you can uh, use the points to buy things. So we, we do have some loyalty programs, but not many, not many. Okay, because those little benefits add up over time right. to make a big thing. Is right. Another mistake we see is people don't look for the deals or just ask about the deals. Look, there's going to be coupons for all kinds of stuff you go to here in the US. Okay. For example, we went to the Georgia Aquarium, one of the best aquariums oh, wow. in the world here in Atlanta, okay? And we went there and they're like, wait, Wow. Um, it's almost four o'clock. Why don't you go buy your ticket online and you can save ten dollars? I'm like, wait a minute, I'm here in line wanting to pay you right now. They're like, no, no. Go on your phone and buy it there and you can save money. I'm like, I didn't Yo, that yo, that would never happen in the UK. They would do that. The staff will come up to you and advise you to use like the discount online instead of just paying here now. Bro, in the UK, they are just gonna get you in. They ain't gonna tell you about no discounts. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care if you save money. Yo, wait, that's sick. You know that. That's why it's important to look, but also right. it's very important to ask. Okay. Do you have any specials? Do you have any deals? Okay. Are there any discounts? Because there really are a lot here in the US. It can be a Groupon kind of thing. You can do that. Ooh, la, la. I know even if you're ordering pizza, let's say you got a family. Oh, we just need one what large that? pizza. That's $19.99. What were you Christmas red green chili sauce? Ooh. Okay. I like chili. I have no clue what this is though. It says red green chili sauce, but I have no clue what it is. What <laughs> you should do is ask, hey, do you have any specials today? And they might have, well, we have two medium pizzas for ten dollars. Wait, that's a lot better deal. Yeah, little things like that, they're all Wait, over the US. If you're here in the summer, your can of Coke might have a What's discount that? to a Six Flags or an amusement park. So you do those things oh, to kind of save a little money. Vibes. And as tourists, when they come to the US, they might not know about these things. So make sure you're looking and also make sure you ask. Your hotel might have discounts yourself. Hell, this restaurant behind me here. Yeah, I'm really trying to like pay attention to what he's saying because like he's, he's giving some good information, but you're putting up all this nice food on the screen, but I can't concentrate. <laughs> I'm trying to pay attention, but I can't concentrate, bro. We got a 10% discount because our hotel knows okay. the people. They gave us a card because we asked. So make sure you do that. And the last mistake Whoa, I want to talk okay, about okay. here in Atlanta, because you notice I'm here in Atlanta, Chicken and you think sandwich. Atlanta, Georgia, it's hot, it's humid, it's horrible. Well, yes, in July and August, but not in January and not in February or December or March. Or... Look, the mistake is people choose the wrong times right. to visit different places in the US. Okay, do you your really research. need to look and make sure is that a good time to visit? Yo, I'm so thankful that I have you guys to help. Oh my, you guys have been such help because I know I'm coming to America, right? And I'm in the process of soon to be planning, but you guys are giving me so much information. Bro, without you, I'd be screwed. I would genuinely be screwed. So everybody that's helping, you know, with... Um, Location ideas, places to, uh, to go, things to do, places to visit. Bro, best times to go. You guys are amazing. So, for example, Atlanta. In the summer, when it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius and a bajillion percent humidity, it's not fun here. I'm not going to lie. Right. To you. This town is awesome. But not when it's freaking 100 degrees and 100 percent humidity, okay? So you think about Too it. Hot. If you're in the southeast, hurricane season from July to November, Minnesota is a gorgeous state to visit, but do you want to go there in February when it's freezing cold and lots of snow? Right. I mean, these are things you got to think about. And the thing is, is we get tempted to go to places because we get a cheap airline ticket, but you're not, you That's might true. not get as much bang for your buck if you go there in the wrong time of the year. That's why it's important to look at the seasons. One of the mistakes I see a lot of people make is they go to uh, Disney World 
between Christmas and New Year's. That is the busiest time of the year. That is like the worst oh. time to go. I wouldn't even go during that time. Bro, if you're going during that time, you're crazy. Between Christmas and New Year's? Because they don't know. So make sure you're checking to make sure that you have the right times right. to visit places because they make a big difference. Anyway, let's leave Atlanta that and go to some place a little more rural out there to enjoy some more of the U.S. And some of the mistakes we all make when we come visit. So now we're here in Jackson, Wyoming. And my next mistake that I see tourists make when they come visit the U.S. is they don't pay attention to their surroundings. I know if you watch the news, it seems oh, like that there's cool something place. bad happening everywhere in the U.S. all the time. And that's just not the case. Okay, the U.S. in general is a very safe place to visit and you'll have a great time and you really won't have to worry too much but that doesn't mean you don't need to pay attention when you're walking drug and weapon free zone penalty doubled on the law city of deadwood around cities or you're exploring national parks you do need to be aware of your surroundings because that magic fanny pack doesn't protect you here either okay <laughs> so make sure you're paying attention when you're going to your hotel ask them hey are there any parts of town i shouldn't be going right. to or i should avoid um if you're going to be out exploring going to the national oh, wow. parks and stuff like that you know what they say don't so go off cute. the path for a reason it could be rattlesnakes it could be bears it could be you know just for safety's sake just make sure you are paying attention to your surroundings. And if you're looking at hotels, you find hotels that are super, super cheap compared to the other places that you're finding. There's a there problem. There might be a reason for that. So do Yo, but this is, bro, you need to have your wits about you everywhere you go. I always do this. I don't know if you guys are the same, but if something seems too good to be true, most of the time, it is. There's a reason for it. I'll always, bro, if I see something that's like really good price, right let's say a hotel a holiday package i'm gonna do a little bit more research and see why you know what i mean because bro i just don't believe in too good to be true now you know what i'm saying i mean things that are actually really good for the price <laughs> especially in the uk we never get good fit, like good prices bro do make sure you're paying attention now since i'm here in jackson i probably have to mention something about the national parks because grand teton national oh, wow. park is right up there and yellowstone national park is just a little bit farther north of here and mistake i see tourists make if you're going to be going exploring a lot of the national park service sites around the u.s make sure you pick up the america the beautiful pass okay. basically it's a year-long pass that lets you in to all these national park service you know sites and parks and national monuments and stuff like that and if you go to two or three it really pays for itself and oh, it wow. makes life so much easier when you have it so don't make the mistake of not getting that especially if you're going to be here in be? the northwest of the u.s which has a lot of really beautiful national parks i don't know if i'm being dumb right now but i didn't realize you have to pay to go to the national parks how much is going to a national park that you can go and enjoy but honestly it can help out anywhere you go now another mistake i see tourists make when they come here and there's some restaurants behind me here which made me think of this is don't make the mistake of not asking for a doggy Ooh. bag look a doggy bag is when you have the extra food after you eat you can take it home because i'll be honest a lot of places in the u.s the portions they give you are enough for Massive. two people i mean that's yeah yo listen 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 in the UK, people feel, believe it or not, this this might blow your minds being from America, people from the UK feel rude to ask for a doggy bag or like to box it up. But in a lot of cases, some people do. Well, not in a lot of cases, but some people definitely do. And sometimes, they will, on a rare occasion, they will ask, do you want me to box it up for you? But that's very rare. That's very rare. A lot of time, people just leave it. That's why I weigh as much as two people because they eat one American serving, which is the biggest two normal person servings. So don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy to ask for a doggy bag or a to-go right. bag or a to-go box Ooh. and take it back to your hotel, microwave it, heat it up, eat it later, take it it's back to your Airbnb because you will get a lot of food. Oh. So so I, I have seen a lot of tourists going, well, we don't ask for doggy bags where I'm from. I'm like, well, you're in the U.S. now. It's totally okay. And some so of those good. places might actually throw in you some more bread rolls or something like that as well. So why not get two meals paid for? Well, just pay for one meal, but actually get two out of it. Okay. Alabama white sauce and barbecue with banana put. Wait, what? Oh, the banana pudding is next to it. Bro, bro, bro. Yeah, banana pudding is it. I was going to say, this is a weird combination, bro. Alabama white sauce, barbecue with banana pudding. I was going to be like, what? Sauce with banana pudding? That sounds mad. Now, another mistake I see tourists make, Ooh, it's, it's when it comes day. to driving. And I know in my Tater Don'ts talks. videos and shocks video, I talk about the distances. So I'm not going to talk about that. What I am going to talk about are the little driving 
nuances in the U.S. that sometimes travelers don't notice or don't know. Okay. One thing you'll see is in some places, not everywhere, like in New York you can't do this, or in New York City you can't do this, but turning right on a red. In a lot of places in the U.S. you actually can turn right on red. If there's no traffic coming and if it's safe, you can go. It's almost like a yield when you're taking a right turn. Oh, yo, I'm going to get beeped at because there ain't no way I'm going on a red, bro, no matter where I am. Unless I fully understand the rules of driving. Yo, you can turn right on a red? Mod. Now, it's not everywhere, so you need to have a heads up for that. And some place will have a special sign people saying, people no right turn on red. But that is some things that sometimes you might be sitting there waiting to turn red, and people might honk at you. Oh, they will? What? The light's red. That could oh. be one of the reasons why. Also, another thing, left lane driving, Look, if you're on the highways, if you're slower, you stay to the right, you pass in the left lane. Right. I know this is how it is in a lot of countries, but it seems like when people travel, they forget that. Now, another mistake I have for you here in Jackson is, don't make the mistake of believing all the stereotypes you hear about the U.S., okay? I know you think everyone in the U.S. eats a pound of bacon for breakfast <laughs> and they go shoots their gun in the afternoon. Look, Yeehaw! that's not the case. I mean, it's not everybody from California is a surfer dude, dude, and everybody that's <laughs> from the Southeast is, is a redneck, and everybody from New England is so prim and proper, and the Midwesterners are all shucksy. Stereotypes. Yes, there's a lot of stereotypes out there about the U.S., and, and one of the things I always tell people, go travel and meet the people on your own, because it doesn't matter if you're in the oh. North Pacific Northwest or the Southeast, the Northeast, the Midwest, or wherever in the U.S. Crazy fish, Americans man. are actually super friendly people. And they're going to want to help you. They're going to want you to go see these things. They're going to want you to know more Aww. about their country and see more of their region. And they're going to give you the helpful tips about, hey, this is where you want to go eat. This is not the place to go eat because they're the ones. Yo, surely this place can be dangerous, bro. Bro, that is so, like, bumpy. <laughs> They're gonna hook you up with a really good local food So make a friend with some of those locals when you do drive around and don't believe the stereotypes except for the friendliness cuz No, I'm going back to this. Hold on. Hold on. Do you reckon people like fall in here? Surely right Surely people like like yo, I was still good to keep my balance here. Like let's say you're walking here People like fall bro gonna hook you up with a really good local food so make a friend with some of those locals when you do drive around and don't believe the stereotypes except for the friendliness because there really are a lot of friendly americans that's so cool. that's what i have from jackson let's go see another beautiful part of the u.s one of the big mistakes that i see people make when they yo not only can he teleport but he's a shapeshifter bro what <laughs> what is this his wife i've never seen a uh, before they come to the United States is that they just come here and they go to the big cities New York LA Chicago Atlanta great cities with a whole lot to offer okay but nearby venture out cities are smaller towns and if you're not if you're not checking those out you're missing out on some really great oh, wow. programming small town festivals and really good Americana for instance not too far outside Atlanta is the elder mill covered bridge it's in this lovely area and we're only an hour and a half away. We went to a really great farmer's market yesterday that had all sorts of arts and things. So just by leaving those big cities for just a day to see something interesting, you'll find a whole new side of America. Related to that is the mistake of not getting off the interstate. You come here, you have to drive in America to really see it all. Right. Get a real good flavor of what there is. But when you do that, you tend to get on the interstate and you go from point A to point B. Okay. Get off the interstate. Yeah, the interstate is, uh, is that like the longest road in America? Get off the interstate, get on a back road. The main road? The highway that's like kind of like a Route 66 kind of thing when you're going from Chicago to LA and you get to Ooh, see these what's small that? towns and get a whole new flavor of the United States. You'll discover a lot of hidden beauties as you come around the, this great country of ours on the back roads. And as you're going from one state to the other, there are often visitor centers, especially if you're on the interstate, but sometimes on cool. the back roads, there'll be a small um, kiosk and stuff with all sorts of information about nearby activities, whether it's outdoor stuff, hiking, biking, things this like that. This is making me really... I know this is a video about, like, mistakes tourists make, but this is really making me want to go American now. Like that, or festivals, or just great places to eat and sleep. There are all sorts of things that you can stop on the road and cool. see something new. So you'll find a lot of different stuff to do in a lot of different states. And I hope that when you come here to the U.S., you'll get out and explore some of the yes. small things on the small, on the small state highways and things. 
and not just the big stuff. Do you know what one of the big things I really want to do, and it seems small, but it's big to me, is go to an American diner. Because I see it on the movies and shows all the time. I would just love to go in there, walk in there, feel really American, and have, like, the biggest breakfast or something, bro. And waffles. And, oh, oh it's, it's, I want a bucket now. I want, I want to go right now. And the thing is, no matter where you oh, are in the U.S., we hope you have a great time. And these aren't mistakes or anything bad. These are just things that you can do to help enjoy your visit to the U.S. even more. So I want to say thank you. And we appreciate you. Georgia, bye, y'all. In the United States. Yeah, of course. <laughs> there you go. Bye. Great video. Make sure you guys go check them out in the description. If you guys got any other tips for me to go to America, please let me know in the comment section. Can't wait to see them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out for there, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.